Okay, friends, uh, it's three o'clock, and normally I like to try to start things on time. <laughs> but so far, I have not been doing so well with that. Imagine that, that we've been challenged with starting on time all day long. This is the fourth one we're doing today. I've got another a couple more to go today. Uh, plus, I'm also trying to reach out to our admin to provide a few for them. Um, in front of you, you should see the screen, Zoom Basics Part 1. And you'll see the bit.ly join our discussion. It's just a Padlet. Feel free to jump in. You don't have to. It's anonymous. Um, I feel like if we're going to talk about online teaching and we're going to use some online tools, why not engage you in spaces where that's actually happening? So if you've never used Padlet before, it's a grand tool, fantastic tool. It's free. Uh, I will caution you on using Padlet in a place where you're not able to moderate. So I can actually set up the Padlet to moderate if I need to. Okay, can I just get a shout out real quickly? Somebody just put in the chat box. Yes, you can hear me. Just to double check and make sure all of you can hear. Just one person's cool with me. Um, beautiful. Okay, thank you. Normally we have somebody who's uh, helping with the chat. In this case, I don't really know if there's anybody hanging out with the chat today. So uh, I will do my best to manage the chat to talk with you and let people in at the same time. So we'll see. Uh, question is, how do we get access to the slide deck and you recording it? So yes, I am recording this. This is now being recorded. And this will be the first one that we'll post and we'll make sure that everybody gets access to this today. Hey, Rebecca, nice to hear from you and see you. What I'm gonna do right now, if you're not sure, is I'd like for you to go ahead and you can turn off your own video. Uh, we're in the midst of trying to save bandwidth kind of like trying to save your precious favorite snack because you're not quite sure if you can go back to the store and get some more. But if you don't know how to do that, you can uh, move around the mouse. But if you're not sure, you're like, hey, Chris, can you do it for me? That's what I'll do. I'm happy to go ahead and stop your video. And another thing is modeling for you. Um, in Zoom, you can set up your settings. And we'll talk about those in a few minutes. But you also, as the moderator, you have a little bit more control. You can go ahead and turn off people's mics as well as putting everybody in mute. And I know that my friend Rebecca just joined and I'm actually going to, it's up to you Rebecca, but um, you can text, you can type me if you want to let make you part of a co-host. No stress, no pressure. All right. All right, friends. So let's get started. A couple things. Um, I'm not gonna show my slides in, in, in full mode and you're gonna be like, Chris, why are you not doing that? And one of the reasons why is if I put my slides in full view, um, then what's gonna be challenging for you is to see, is for my screen, it's actually, I'm, I'm, I'm challenged right now because it's happening and my, my internet's slowing down. And so that's why I'm not gonna put this in presentation mode. Uh, if you did jump on with us, I did have the Padlet there and in case you wanted to see what people are doing, um, you could again anonymous you don't have to write everything down but people are putting down like how they feel and that's kind of that's basically it man we're feeling it today we're feeling uh, a little bit stressed a little bit frustrated so feel free to, to go ahead and share that share some things you've learned uh, share some things you've done if you want to uh, reach out on Twitter because that's where a lot of us are we're on Twitter you can go ahead and join on Twitter all right now you can see my beautiful mug <laughs> So this is the fourth webinar we've done today. I've arranged my room to do the best I can to not to provide a less distracting background. Um, and everything we're going to talk about today is really is real life. Right now, all of you are probably zooming in your car. Maybe you're zooming in your bedroom. Maybe you're zooming outside. I don't know where you're zooming, but the reality is, all of us will be engaging in this type of space possibly with you know noise happening so just let you know it's okay all right if you've never joined a webinar before you have no idea how to use a webinar a couple quick tips uh, one you can see I'm wearing a headphones right now and the reason why I'm wearing my headphones is because it's easier for me to go ahead and share with you uh, and to speak clearly to you it's my best that I can do so if you are going to use this tool with your students or even with uh, peers Having a pair of uh, earbuds with a good microphone is kind of important for us to be able to use. Uh, the same thing goes with our students. The reality is if you are going to chat with students, and we'll talk about that in a minute, uh, encouraging them to, to uh, have a set of earbuds is good. Again, 
maybe they don't have one and they just will do the best they can. And in that case, you just turn everybody's microphones off and that's okay. So right now everybody's on mute. You can see the chat going on. Uh, at this moment in time, while I'm speaking, I'll do my best to respond to your chat. You can just throw it in there in the chat box. Um, maybe you have a question that somebody else could answer. Awesome. And I will do the best I can to answer that. And the very first question was asked was, are we going to get access to the slide deck? Answer is yes. And this was the recording I'm making, so I'll make that available for you as well. And our goal is to keep just to 30 minutes. I'll hang out afterwards if you have any questions. Uh, um, if there's less people afterwards, I can unmute you and we can just chat and that's totally awesome. All right. So I don't know if you're on a, um, a computer. I don't know if you're on a tablet. I don't really know what device you're on, but if you're on a laptop, a district laptop, then hopefully you're able to move your mouse. And when you do, you'll see those controls at the bottom, mute, video, participants. If you all click on that where it says participants and chat, you should see two little boxes and you can pull those out to be separate boxes. And this will allow you to engage in chatting. And this will also allow you to raise your hand when you have a question. And right now, if you raise your hand, I'm not gonna ignore you. I'm just trying to monitor if you really want to know what my life is like, I've got three different monitors going on at the same time. Uh, whenever I do a Zoom meeting or a webinar, I always like to have my monitor that I'm using, and then I'm doing a live. So this is my daughter's Chromebook. So she is on seeing everything that you guys see just to help me pace myself and make sure that you're able to see all the things that I can do. Uh, how do you make people so they can't see each other? That's awesome, and I'll show you that in a few minutes. But the real simple thing is, uh, as the host, because I'm the host, meeting, teacher, whatever you want to call me, um, when you click on participants as the host, up comes a whole nother window. Uh, and you can actually see it right in front of you. You see on this screen on the right hand side where it says participant, and you see what's KK, that's my daughter. If I were to click on the microphone, I could turn off the microphone and I can turn off the video. And the powerful thing about this is once I disable your video, nobody can really see each other. So. Uh, if you are on a iOS device, you can't really move your mouse, but you might be able to click on your screen. And when you do down at the bottom, you're going to see the same thing, mute videos. And if you click on participant, uh, that's where you're able to go ahead and click chat. The problem with an, not problem, but the thing with an iPhone is you have to swipe if you're going to go ahead and do a chat. So it's a little bit challenging to do multiple things. Uh, a laptop's a little bit easier um, to do that. Yeah. All right. And like I said, if you have questions, I'm going to do my best to correspond to the chat, but I'll also just go ahead and just kind of share and talk with you guys here. All right. So welcome to, you know, setting up your Zoom for your, for your classroom. So we're going to talk about how do you use it. It's not going to be super complicated. You're actually going to be surprised. It's pretty simple to do. A couple of things I do want to mention. One, we're not telling you you have to use Zoom. You don't have to. Um, but we are using zoom as a communication tool so if you want to communicate with your students phone calls emails uh, um, using synergy and connecting through students through that way those are all valid ways to do so uh, in some cases teachers might want to communicate with their students with more of a video setting or even just at least an online setting and this is where zoom does come in so again we're not telling you that you have to use zoom um, how can i turn zoom screen onto a virtual whiteboard yeah you can actually um, you can't probably see my screen because I'm not showing the controls, but at the top of my controls, I have annotated whiteboard and I can turn my screen into a whiteboard, but I will let you know that students on Chromebooks can't interact with the whiteboard. Um, there is no technology support for Chromebooks to actually engage in the whiteboard, but they can see the whiteboard. So just as a, as a short note for that. All right. So as far as Zoom, nobody's telling you have to use it, but if you want to use it, um, this morning a couple elementary teachers were, were asking us, do we need to use Zoom with their, with their kindergarten? No, if you want to communicate with them through Seesaw or if you find a way that you feel comfortable with, that's totally fine. I know that there are teachers who are going to be asking, how do I communicate with Zoom? And so that's what today's meeting is about. Take a moment and tell me what you think about this meme. This is probably one of my top three or four favorite memes that I've been either seeing or reposting uh, every day. So just take 10 seconds and throw in the chat what you guys, I shouldn't say you guys, what you all think or have you ever seen this meme before or what you think about it or how does it make you feel? 
Ah, uh, there we go. I think it's what parents expect. Yeah, I think that is a great point. <laughs> it's much more than that. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. It takes weeks. Matter of fact, actually, I've done online teaching. I've created stuff online. I've worked for Grand Canyon University as an online instructor for five years. Um, 180, 180 hours is what a typical online course that's well built and designed takes. Uh, I'm not saying you have to spend 180 hours. Nope. I'm not saying that at all. But somebody had mentioned it takes a long time. That is true. So if you're talking about teaching online, building an entire course and all of its complexity, you're talking 180 hours of work. We're not here to do that. We're here to, to give you some tools to make you successful today so that you can kind of start to connect with your students. And one of those things is connecting with our students. And that's what we can use Zoom for. Again, email, phone calls. If you do have a phone and you have, an, uh, you have a Google Voice number, you can actually use Google Voice by swiping and clicking anonymous. So I have a Google Voice number. It's been something I've had for seven years. And you can actually call people and they not know who you are. So there are some ways of connecting. Uh, to make it interesting, it will take some time, but maybe try something new once a week. Oh, I love that. Yeah, absolutely. Again, we're not here to like build this boat in one day. We're here to give some tools, some technology uh, tools that will help them be successful. Uh, previous use of Canvas has given me some confidence. Oh, see, that makes my heart flutter, Stephen. Thanks. All right, here we go. So normally we have a whole crew of awesome people today, but unfortunately you only get me today. Uh, I don't have anybody else hanging out with chat, but I'm going to go ahead and um, make my good friend Christina a co-host. Uh, Christina, you don't have to do any talking by all means, but you're more welcome to uh, respond in the chat if you want to, okay? And if you do want to jump in, Christina, you just jump in. Um, so with that being said, Chris, how do I use Zoom? Well, right now I'll tell you a few things. I'll tell you how to log in, how to get your account started, but I will let you know that if you just type in Zoom support or Zoom tutorials, okay, Steve's here, awesome. Um, there are some really fantastic tools when it comes down to um, getting into information from Zoom. Like It already exists, so you don't have to fret about having to recreate the wheel. Uh, I know that um, Rebecca had asked me, hey, are there Zoom tutorials for students? that we have, and I don't have one right now, but more than likely, if, if a teacher were to go in here and say, you know, I really wanna help my students figure this out, there's some information uh, in there. So thanks, uh, Steve, for hanging out. So yes, I can go back to this. So Steve Simpson uh, is here today, and he is right there in the middle, and he's uh, on chat with me today, and his email is down below, Steve underscore Simpson. Uh, please make sure I spell that correctly, Steve, um, down below. So let's get going to Zoom. So if you've never used Zoom before, a couple really important things to remember. One, here in our Beaverton School District, we want you to use your Beaverton Google account. So when you Google Zoom, you just go to zoom.us or when you log in, you'll notice that it says log in with Google. And so that's the first thing you're gonna do. You are going to sign in with your BSD Google. Matter of fact, I'll just type in BSD Google. Um, please do not use your private account. Please do not use a personal account. And the reason why is because um, Zoom is signing with us a student privacy agreement where they're gonna keep student data a little more safe. If you're using the private version of Zoom, you are not going to do that. As a matter of fact, you're probably falling out of compliance if you choose to use the private version of Zoom. It's a little bit safer in this space. Hey Chris, well once I log in, Chris, and I click on Zoom and I log in with Google, what do I do next? Well, once you log in, you could actually, it actually goes to your account. So I'm gonna come up here. And I'm going to refresh my screen. I did a Zoom class meeting today with a few kids. I had no idea what I was doing, but it did it, and the kids loved it. Going to try this every morning. Oh, that makes my heart totally flutter as well. I love it. All right, so once I've logged into Zoom, uh, on the right-hand side, I'll click on where it says my account. And just like all of you will have the same thing, you'll click on your account. And the first thing you'll be welcomed with is your screen, which is your profile. And you notice that my computer is a little bit slow. So one of the reasons, again, why I'm, I'm asking people to leave their videos off, leave the audio off, is because we're trying to save that bandwidth. So once you do log in with Zoom, you'll notice that you've been given a personal meeting ID and even possibly a personal link. This is okay to send. So right now, if Steve and I are going to do a, a video chat, I'll send Steve a video link and say, hey, Steve, jump on or Christine and I have been working all weekend. Uh, I've sent her uh, the same link over and over again, and we just go ahead and we have a video chat. And that's totally fine. 
Um, if you're going to work with your team one on one, I think it's okay. But once you get into the point where you're like, hey, um, our social studies team is going to meet every week for the rest of the year, then this is not where you don't want to use your personal email or your personal link. You do not. And matter of fact, you do not want to share this personal link with students. What you're going to end up doing is going over to the left-hand side to where it says meetings. So I know like Suzanne had mentioned, Suzanne had mentioned how she did a, a Zoom with her meeting with her students today. And I'm not sure if you gave your personal one, you don't have to respond. Um, but just from here on out, we're advocating that if you are going to do Zoom meetings, especially the ones that are reoccurring or happening quite often, then you're going to go ahead and create a whole new meeting. And this is how simple it is. I just literally click on start a meeting. Uh, and I'm going to go ahead and call it my math. My math, awesome team. You can do your description if you want to. Uh, you can choose to put in the dates. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, but I want you to know if you are putting the dates, you really can only go so far. Matter of fact, I can only extend it. Uh, oh, wait. Oh, that's when it starts. Oh, that's kind of cool. Didn't realize that before. So I can actually do, so I'm going to go ahead and hit recurring. So if I know I'm meeting with my team every week or every month, then I'm going to go ahead and click on a recurring meeting. And this is where you can use a calendar, but here's the issue with the calendar. Um, oh, actually, there is no issue. That's even better. Okay, so literally two hours ago, I couldn't put in an ending date. Beautiful. And now I can. So I can make a recurring meeting every day or every week. And I can even set the dates on it. And then that would basically provide one link that my students would use or my team would use. Okay. And right now I'm just going to say weekly and that's it. I'm not worried about registration and I'm not worried about password because if this is going to be interacting with my team, uh, then we're already together. I feel pretty comfortable with that. So I'm going to leave the password and the required registration off. I am going to say host. That's me has the video only. Participants are off for now. As the, the host, I can always turn the video back on. And then down below are three really important buttons. Um, you can choose to enable before the host if you want to. I mute participants on entry, and then I enable a waiting room. And so some of you were waiting around for me to let you in. And I'm doing that because if I am going to use this with students, I want to make sure that when they come in, I'm letting them in. I kind of know who they are. The students can change their names. Um, and so I kind of want to just be responsible for who's coming into the room. If it's my team, I might not. I might uncheck it. But just realize if you uncheck it, it's unchecked for all future for those meetings. So you just got to be careful. I'm going to hit save. Yeah, and there is no time limit, Steve. So there used to be a 40-minute time limit, and now they've removed that for the moment. And now you've noticed that right now I've created my team limit. It tells me where we're meeting and it occurs until how often it, it occurs. I can send it by uh, Outlook, which I would have advocated that you put it on teachers' calendars. I can directly email it, that link to my colleagues if I want to, or you can even copy the entire invitation. And in this case, it has the website address and it has a meeting ID. If you have colleagues, or even students who are going to be using an iOS device or a tablet or a mobile device, they can just type in that meeting ID and that will allow them to watch or to engage in the meeting as well. Um, yeah, a waiting room is a great idea. And I don't know if you noticed, but when you guys were hanging out, um, on my first slide, when you were all hanging out, I, I had my, my, my Zoom open so that this was the first thing you saw, or at least I tried to. Um, so I knew about if I had a meeting in a couple minutes or if I knew I was meeting with students in a few minutes, I would have this as showing my slide. I might have some norms or some uh, classroom procedures or routines. Hey, we're going to meet in a class today. Here's a few things I want you to remind you of. Or I might even put a, a web link where I want to engage them and get going. So if you're showing up early, I've given you a task. Uh, I would be careful with the tasks that you give to them. Uh, I gave you the Padlet. The Padlet's fantastic, um, but you're all adults. I'm not terribly worried about adults putting terribly inappropriate things down. The Padlet's anonymous. You can moderate the Padlet, but then you've created another workflow for you. So just, if you're gonna engage your students in a time where they're just kind of hanging out, it's no different than a bell ringer. 
You could do a, kind of a Canvas discussion. You could do a, a short quiz, like, and I call it quiz, but a survey. Um, you can just do some simple things to engage them while they're waiting for you. Okay. Yeah, Google Form. Yeah, absolutely. All those things are, are fantastic ideas that you can do. Uh, I'll go back to my meeting space. So again, once I'm done, I can do the Outlook. I would advise you to send through things for the Outlook to your peers. Uh, I don't know about you, but I live by my Outlook calendar. Um, so if it's not on my calendar, I'm probably not gonna remember it as well. Uh, and then you can see the options of enabled host, uh, participate, mute. Those are the things that are going to take place. And I can, of course, start this meeting and you can always edit if possible. Is it possible to make the Padlet URL a hot link? Um, is it, oh, here's, if we're in a webinar Zoom like you guys are seeing right now, you can see my screen, but you can't click on that. So I might put that link in the chat, or I made it, as, it, I made it a short link so that my students could at least type it. Uh, but that's a great question, uh, Stephen. Okay. So that's the things about getting into the meeting. But now you're like, okay, Chris, I've started my meeting. Uh, I've been able to invite my friends or my colleagues, or I have a meeting set up for tomorrow. And um, somebody had asked a little earlier today, well, Chris, what if I teach more than one class period? Should I have um, a Zoom meeting for different class periods? And, and I'm going to say, if you want to, that's fantastic. Uh, for example, I know my friend Rebecca teaches Lit and Comp, I believe nine, and then of course she teaches Writing 121. So if you have more than one class period, it's okay to teach, to, to create one. Lit and Comp, nine, period one. It's its own meeting. And I only want my ninth, I only want period one showing up. Then I can create one for period two or three. And then I can take that link and I can post it on the Canvas page. It could be on the homepage. I could put it on the calendar so that it shows up as something that students are going to engage with. If you create it as a Canvas assignment, then it's a to-do. It's like, hey guys, I'm giving you a task. This is the link. I want you to, to kind of jump in and join this meeting. Um, nobody's making the students do this, but if you want to give them an opportunity, again, we're providing learning opportunities. That's one way of doing that. Um, yeah, okay. So again, it goes back to like, why would I want to choose more than one class period? It's up to you. Uh, some of you might like, hey, we're all one big family. Let's look at all lit and comp into one class. Totally fine. All right, so once you're finished, Chris, you're like, okay, I'm done, I'm ready to go. What, are you, what else do you have for me? Well, before you set up your big gigantic meeting, and again, I'm gonna send you the slide deck just to let you know, uh, our team has built a few things for you. Uh, I need to pull this down a little bit. One of the things we've, we kind of designed for our team, for our teachers, is a space where they can go ahead and look for what's called an online meeting workflow for teachers. Again, you do not have to use Zoom. But if you're gonna use any type of video chat format, Google Hangouts, Meets, Teams, Zoom, whatever, with your students, I feel like these kind of follow the same thing. So again, we're gonna send this to you all. You don't have to squint and read it, but I am gonna show you what it is. But on page two, we've really kind of laid out for you, and again, you will get this. Um, enable the waiting room, disabling file transfer, turning off cameras and you're like well chris where is all that all of that is in your settings um i don't know if you've been looking on the news lately but zoom bombed hashtag i think zoom bombed um is one thing that's been happening people have been posting their meetings link to an online place and people are jumping in and other people are coming in and causing disruptions uh can I provide uh, a virtual background for students to use and can I ensure that, that students will create an even experience? Great question. Um, I, as you see, don't have a virtual background, but Steve will show you his in a few minutes. I, my laptop is not a new enough laptop to run a virtual background, but if I had a green screen behind me, then I could have a fake background and that would be fine. Um, with that being said, students on Chromebooks cannot enable the virtual. So again, if your students are using a Chromebook, they cannot enable the virtual background. Uh, on an iPhone, I'm sorry, on an iPhone or a tablet, those virtual backgrounds can be done. So when you're setting up your conversation with your students, if you're choosing to engage them with video, I would suggest <coughs> to come up with those norms, remind your students of those norms, 
And one of those norms would probably be, listen, if you're going to come into a video chat, um, please make sure you're in a space where maybe the wall is blank. Unfortunately, this is what I got. This is the best I have. <clears throat> so coming up with those norms, we have no control over what our students can and cannot do, and we have no control over their learning space. So that's one of the reasons why I've turned off your videos. Um, if it were me, I might meet with small groups of students. And the reason why is because then it's easier for me to click down the list and, and, and unclick videos of five students at a time. Say, hey, we're going to meet at this time. And it's just a little bit easier to control. Uh, I'm not going to tell you how to run, but these are some suggestions based on my experience and based on my countless conversations with teachers from all over the world uh, because they're really all feeling the same thing. They're trying to make sure that the students are engaged, but not necessarily causing disruptions or inappropriate things happen. And I'm not saying they're going to. So <clears throat> uh, can we create separate meeting addresses for whatever separate class without having to set? Yes, you, <clears throat> you don't have to set, when I went to my meeting times, you don't have to set a reoccurring day. You could just click and create a new meeting and then you can delete them. I can go back to these previous meetings and I can delete it. So Steve said yes, so that's the answer. All right, so now I'm gonna come back to the screen. Um, just like you all came in, I was, the, I was able to mute all of you at the same time, and I'm, I'm able to unmute you at the same time, okay? And then not only can I mute my participants or my guests, but I can also go ahead and turn off their videos. And so this picture, it's hard to see, but again, you'll get access to this. Um, where I'm actually able to go ahead and disable everybody's video. So right now, if I have new people coming in, by default, their video is not disabled. But now, all of you see that I've, un I've checked your videos and turned them off. And you're like, well, Chris, if I'm working with students, how do I get, how do they get my attention? So again, we go back to that one screen where it says um, participate. If you click on that participate, on the right-hand side, you could raise your hand. You could say a yes, you could say no go faster. So if your students are listening and you're talking too fast, like I do, they might say, go slower. Um, so Rebecca says, I'm planning to do this with whole group with little breakouts uh, and going around the room. I think of using groups as the tables. And I think that's fantastic. And Zoom has the capability of doing what's called breakout rooms. But again, I would encourage you, if you are going to do breakout rooms and you haven't tried this out, Maybe you could ask another teacher to be a co-host. Like, so for example, Steve and I might be on the same time where he's co-hosting this, this, this meeting with my students so that we can both jump around the room and make sure that students are just doing the things that they should be doing. Um, so these are just some ideas. Again, you don't have to do it. Uh, if Rebecca and I were on the same team, I, would, if I wasn't feeling comfortable with doing rooms. I might say, hey, Rebecca, can I add you as a co-host? And we can just kind of go through this together. Uh, one thing to do is set the meeting's expiration date after the 30th and set up different meetings for different classes. Yeah, and Steve, nice work with that. So not only can you mute people, uh, you can turn off their videos. Students, of course, can click on chat. And I don't know if you've noticed, but right now, all of you can either send me a chat or you can send the whole group. But if I were to click on the little tiny uh, ellipses or, or I call them snowmen or jelly beans, I can take the chat and I can turn it so that no one can chat. You can only chat with me or you can chat with everybody and privately. Now, as adults, I have no problem switching that to you can all chat to whoever you want. But as a class, I might not go down that road quite yet. So again, you know, even though we're online, some of the characteristics of a classroom workflow and routine are similar. Right, so we can still kind of apply some of those. So do I want my kids all writing notes and chatting with each other or do I want some semblance of order while we're doing the lesson or something like that? So, and I think, Rebecca would probably echo it, if you want your students actually engaged more than just simply listening to me as a webinar, give them Canvas discussion. Give them a chance where they can discuss in a group, video or chat, and then what happens is after they've done that, then in SpeedGrader, you can look at, okay, Rebecca responded to the first post. Now I can see her other follow-up posts. So give your chance, give your students this chance to go ahead and engage, but also get, use the safety mechanisms that are in place. Canvas archives all student work. So it's just a great idea. Yeah, Canvas is super helpful. Uh, and, and I don't know if you know um, who I am, and I forgot to introduce myself, but 
my role is I'm a TOSA, I'm a Canvas administrator. My goal is to support all of our secondary uh, using Canvas. In each of our buildings, we have Canvas facilitators. Uh, so Rebecca Larson, she's a Canvas facilitator at Sunset, and we have Christina at Westview. So you have support. If you've never used Canvas, we're doing webinars on how to use Canvas as well. And then finally, um, again, you can also, this is what I've done with, with, with all of you, my friends. When you came in, I stopped your video. I, I was able to make Christina and Steve the co-host quickly, and that allows me to have other people engaged in this conversation, so it's not just me, Manny. Um, if it was just me here with, uh, what, how many of us are here? There's 44 of us. If it was just me with 44 of you and you're all asking these questions, it might be a bit challenging. Um, so that's where I might involve, I might encourage small group meetings or using a co-host. Okay. And I believe that is it. And then of course you can also um, go ahead and record. The conversation today when we first started was should teachers um, record webinars or meetings with students and videos, their video face. So should teachers record Zoom meetings when students' faces are in the screen? I'll let you go ahead and respond to that question. So should, should teachers record Zoom meetings when students' videos, their faces are in those videos? What do you guys think? Yeah, you're, you're allowed to go ahead and say yes or no. <laughs> uh, it seems like a privacy issue. Yeah, nice call. Bruce says no. Yeah. Yeah. So we're not going to, yeah, yes, if it's a class discussion, and I'm only posting my Canvas page. Okay, good. So I feel like I'm not going to tell you no. I, that's not my goal. I'm not going to be the one telling you what you can and cannot do. But I will encourage you to think about when you record and the purpose of it and where you're gonna post it. So like for example, Rebecca says, if I post it in my class, my students have to be authenticated into Canvas to see those. But I also have to take into consideration that if I'm going to do a Zoom video with my students and I need to establish the norms and the classroom procedures for doing this, don't forget, your students have this device. They can take a picture, they can record whenever they want. So, I also want you to know that students can do screencasting. So be aware of those choices that you make. If you're going to go ahead and do a discussion and you want to record it and students' faces are on the video with whatever background they have going on, just be aware of that. So that's one of the reasons why I feel like you knowing that you can control students' videos is important. That's a good thing. Um, if you've never investigated Canvas conferences, there is no video for the students. They're only seeing you and the whiteboard space. So if you're concerned, like Chris, I don't want to use conferences, but I want to communicate verbally, I want to be able to engage them. There is Canvas conferences as well. So there's some other avenues that we're going to be talking about. Uh, yeah, kids can go to screen shots. And I'm not trying to paint a picture that all students are going to do these terrible things, please, by no means. Um, but it is, if you spend a few minutes on social media or you Google it, you will find examples of teachers who've shared or express that these are some of the things that have happened. So just be aware, that's all. And the same rule applies. If, if you can't post a picture of a student in your classroom that you've taken their picture and posted on social media, it would be effectively the same thing. So um, if I choose, I can only uh, use an active speaker. Um, if I choose only show active speaker, only tab I'd record. Uh, I'm not quite sure. Wouldn't you want to record for students who are here? Okay, perfect question, Caitlin. So that's the, that's the reason why I asked this question. Because if I want to do a lesson and I want some participants, my question is really this. Do I need my students' faces on the video for me to teach a lesson? And if your answer is yes, then establish those norms with your students and, and go through that, policy, that, that procedure. But if your answer is like, I can, I can teach a lesson for 10 minutes on my desktop with Zoom. I don't need my students. Record it. Hit record. When you're done recording, post that recording in Canvas, and then you have no concerns or um, there's no concerns about safety. So I think your question is great. Definitely record a lesson for students who are not there. Um, but think, just think twice, three times before you record a lesson that's a live video. And quite honestly, you might have students who are like, awesome, who never um, do anything inappropriate, which is awesome. All right. I'll say, I'm going to, um, it's 3.35, so I kind of want to stop talking for a second because I've been talking and I apologize. I don't mean to be just talking and talking, but um, 
I don't know if there's anybody who has any questions, but you can throw your questions in the chat box. We haven't covered everything again. Um, this is just a snack. Uh, I'm doing another session tonight at seven and we'll be doing some other ones. Uh, are you doing a screencast? Yeah, so I am, I am recording this video, this um, webinar, and I will put the link so that you can see the link. Yes, that is correct. Um, does anybody have any challenging or difficult questions that are just not 100% sure about? They're like, you know, Chris, I, I've thought about this. Um, and I will say one more thing if you're okay with me sharing. Um, Steve's already posted it. We have put together a few uh, samples of, of resources. We put in a BSD hub, which basically means uh, it is a uh, Canvas page that is public, that every teacher can get to, and you're like, well, Chris, how do I get to it? Well, I've published on every um, Canvas all staff page, Aloha, Sunset, whomever, this, Christine and I worked on this for a few days. Uh, this is her design, and we've just taken the most essentials and we've placed it in the all staff page. And then the goal is that you could just go ahead and click on, oh, here's the teacher hub that Chris was talking about, and you could go to the hub. Or, hey, Chris had mentioned uh, the teaching and learning resources of, that's on teacher source. There's that link. So we're, we're just giving you some information that in the end you're going to be like, okay, was it in an email? Was it in a Google Doc? Where do I find that? So we're just giving you another space where you can go find that information. Uh, will there be ongoing trainings this week? Yeah, we are doing full on. Tomorrow, I, have, I think I have nine trainings to do doing tomorrow. I think they're all Canvas related and maybe even a couple of Zoom. Um, we have some hours that we're, we're also providing for teachers that are just simply, you can just jump in and let us know. Um, and will you make the window? Yeah, I'm gonna share the deck. And then can you set up a meeting and put the link in the meeting? Yeah, I'll put in my, um, my book me account if you wanna book time with me. Um, you guys are so busy. Um, so we'll just have to be careful on trying to arrange those times. But also tap into your lits. Every high school and secondary school has a lit, some share. So if you have Colette, you have Colette at two schools. And then all of our high schools and secondary schools have a Canvas facilitator who are very comfortable with Canvas. Maybe they've done Zoom, but if you're in an online space, they're the, they are definitely a triage. And we are also tapping into the IA Cadre team in elementary to help out. I'm also wondering about Notability. Yeah, um, Notability is fantastic. If you have an iPad, you can actually do Zoom on your iPad and record your screen, or just record your screen, your screen on your iPad and just record Notability. So there's multiple ways of doing Notability. Hey Chris, let me jump in. I just, just wanted to just reiterate something that you had said earlier, and that's the idea of practicing sending out a, a Zoom invite a couple of different ways. One, just sending a link. Two, scheduling it out. Um, you can schedule it through Outlook. You can schedule it. <clears throat> you could send it just as an as an email, just that link. There's multiple ways to send these meeting invites to your peers. Um, the second thing I'm demonstrating here is this background. And you can change your background. I'm in my uh, bedroom, and my, you know, uh, this is this background is hiding all kinds of, of things you don't want. I don't want you to see. And uh, if you have a, a, a modern, updated computer, some of our work machines can't do this. But if you go down to your, you can set a virtual background, and that is kind of a, a nice way of of uh, making it so you don't have to. Let's sort of think about the space behind you. Yeah. And like Steve and, said, yeah, go ahead, dude. go ahead. Oh, the, the, just the last thing, uh, we, we can provide the resources to you. Sometimes there's overwhelming. If you just go to zoom.us yeah. and just go to their help section, they have these great little 40 second, 35 second videos. You can consume a lot of this just over a cup of coffee in the morning and their resources are excellent. And they're, yeah. they're, they're super quick to, to search through and, and consume. And uh, like Steve said, like my laptop is not capable of doing a green screen. So if I want to put in a green screen, I have to go actually physically go to the dollar store, buy a dollar or two of those um, green poster boards. Um, our students cannot run green screen on their Chromebooks, so they will not be able to do a virtual background. So just be aware of that. Um, if you have an updated phone, you can run backgrounds on your phones. Uh, Kids may have to sign in to the Google account. Okay, so here's a good question. No signing in whatsoever for students to use Zoom when the teachers are initiating the Zoom. 
Okay, so if you are going to initiate the Zoom with your students, um, one second, my friends, right there. If you're gonna initiate the Zoom with your students, make sure that in the settings, you're gonna allow join from browser link. And this will allow the students to be able to jump on and not have to download or sign in. We don't even, matter of fact, don't even want the students to sign in. Like, they're gonna figure it out, um, but they don't need to sign in. So I think, uh, hopefully that's your question, Rebecca. Um, I think if they're going to initiate one, yes, but I would, I, again, I, I, Rebecca teaches like high school, and so she is a different, um, her students are a little bit different than my middle school students would be. So I don't want my middle school students initiating <laughs> Zoom videos, uh, but Rebecca might feel 100% comfortable with that. So do you guys have any questions? It's uh, way past our bedtime. Uh, I've been up since 3.30 trying to, to work on stuff. Christine and I have been doing it. I know all of you have been working hard um last webinar i cried quite a bit so you missed that i'm not gonna cry this time <laughs> so yeah exactly um i'll hang out for about six seven minutes if you want to hang out and you're like hey chris i'd love to send you a chat or can you just clarify a few things i can and we will make sure that the question was chris how do we get um how do we get this link and, and we'll share this link out student training online okay so great question with that being said uh I'm not providing online training for Zoom. Again, just like Steve said, teachers can, anybody can go to Zoom tutorials, but on every middle school and high school, all student course, there is a Canvas orientation module that takes students through that. And if you're not using Canvas, we're doing a ton of Canvas beginners uh, integration, or uh, beginner courses, and we're gonna be getting into leveraging the Canvas, calendar uh, we're gonna be getting into Christine and I are doing a webinar this week on how to use modules effectively because if you're gonna move to online spacing thinking modules could become your best friend uh, and then the last thing I want to remind you about if you're okay with this last thing um, I'm not gonna tell you how to spend your your days teaching but this five is how I would boil down the five things if I was a classroom teacher, and it would be one, checking in with my students, and there's lots of things they can do. Two, providing an opportunity to engage my students, so an opportunity to do a task, classroom discussion, something. Three, providing feedback, so if they are doing classroom discussion in Canvas or they've submitted something to me, I'm providing feedback. Four, I'm providing office hours, so my students are know when they can contact me. And five, which I don't have highlighted yet, it's wrap up, which basically means if you want to engage your students in a closing activity, like, hey, this week we spend some time learning about something, give me a quick, here's a quick, um, you know, you could do a quiz, but you could do a Kahoot or do something where you feel comfortable with. So again, if you, I'm not telling you how to break down your day, but if you want to break down your day into those five things, I feel like those are probably going to keep you engaged with your students. Uh, and they're going to support what their districts send out as far as how we want how they want us to engage and provide students opportunities of learning How are you offering uh, office hours? And that's a fantastic question um, And Steve might want to chime in but I've been wrestling with this question because I Can post on my home screen the office hours that a, that a student might want to do it and I might simply say I'm available during these times and I could say to connect with me maybe send me an inbox the thing is I want to avoid hundreds of emails and I don't know how to do it I'm still figuring this out and I want to avoid other means of communication that eventually like texting phone calls email like I just want to narrow it down so I feel like maybe canvas inbox is going to be cumbersome so maybe I'll choose email instead but I'm just going to get it to the one space um, I don't know, it's up to you, but then I also want to have a time where my students can engage. So the office hours, I feel like could be, this is where I'm available, and then this is where I'm going to post the link, and you can jump in during this time. I probably would not have the link, actually, I apologize. I don't know if I would, prov I don't know if I would provide the link for every, e for every meeting it all the time. I haven't thought that through. So Steve, I asked Nicole about that today, because I've been debating in my brain that uh, isn't somebody doing training on office hours later this week yeah we're gonna do lots of trainings this week um, the other thing too is um, you know we have a program called Microsoft bookings and we might need to look at that and have our students book time with us so um, Chris, I think with uh, I yeah. if you just create a, a, a meeting that expires 
June 30th, and you uh, have a waiting room. Yes, uh, yeah, good call. And yeah. the students can show up. And wait. And if you're not there, not, no, no harm, no foul. And you just publish your, your office hours and you show up when you're scheduled your office hours and that one link will service as your office hours. I even think, and this is again, new to us. Yeah. I think you're notified if there are participants yes. waiting in your meeting room. Yeah. So if you forget that, oh, my office hours are from 1130 to 1230, you get a notification yeah. that someone's there waiting. Yeah. And, and like Steve said, once you download, once you create your Zoom um, webinar, you can download it to Outlook. That's where I would put it in my calendar. And then the other thing too is if you enable that waiting room, which I know I have it in my Zoom right here, enable waiting room, the students can't really do anything. So here's my last advice for you because you guys are fantastic. Um, create a Zoom, invite your family, invite some friends, uh, invite some uh, teammates, and start to play around with it and feel safe about messing around and trying to figure out if this button is working for me or not. Because the whole screen sharing thing, like I don't think you guys can see, but right now, again, I am running three devices at the same time. That doesn't mean you have to. It just means I've been doing this for a long time, so that's how I run things. Um, but get used to it. Practice. It's okay to do that. Uh, and Susan says, thanks. Oh, well, Susan. Susan, you're amazing, so thank you. Um, anyways, friends, I'm going to hang out. I'm going to stop talking. <laughs> and you guys can go ahead and hang out with me for a few minutes, send some more chat. Um, and if not, I'm gonna, I'll, we'll end in about three minutes if you guys are okay with that. So. And uh, if you want me to unmute you because you want to ask a question, raise your hand. I'm happy to do that. All right, so Mark is raising his hand. So Mark, I gotta find you. So hold on, Mark. <laughs> hold on, my friend. Oh, there he is. Okay, Mark, we're gonna go ahead and you should be, uh, go ahead, my friend. Hey, hey, Chris, can you hear me? Yes, absolutely. Oh yeah. Hey, I was, I was asking about Notability. Yeah. Uh, can we uh, have Notability running instead of the slide deck for students? I think that I think that and I'm assuming you're saying if you're going to use zoom on your iPad use notability instead, right? Uh, I, I want to use notability to show things and use zoom to conference. Yes, absolutely So my thinking and you can do it however you want But if you want to actually put zoom on your iPad and Then you can actually share your screen on the iPad and the students can see notability That's totally fine if you have the ability to have a document camera and you want to you know, put your your iPad on the on the table and use a document camera to actually. That's I think that's worth trying out. But yeah, the answer is yes. You can. Do, you don't have to use slides. I'm doing slides because I'm not engaging you in the writing component piece. I'm just kind of giving you some notes. So absolutely, you can totally do that. So so as the host, it just shows what's whatever's on your screen. It shows whatever's on your screen. Yeah. Now I would say I be honest. I haven't tried using Notability and using uh, Zoom at the same time, but I do know that you can, sh that you can do those things. Uh, worst case scenario, my friend, you, um, yeah, I say try it out and then get back to me. Say, hey Chris, it works like a charm. And then uh, make a screencast for everybody to see. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, Thanks. Thanks. All right. Uh, any of my other friends who want to raise their hand, uh, how would a document camera help? Uh, I was just thinking that if you, I was just thinking if I'm doing my zoom on my computer and I can hook up a document camera then I could probably do some writing or I might be able to use my iPad. I guess I'm just thinking I have an external camera um, instead of screen, instead of zooming on my iPad. So I was just in my brain thinking about that. Oh, what do I mean by raising your hand? Um, if you, I should say if you, um, when you show up my friends and you, if you're on a computer, uh, if you stretch your, your window out, you'll see the word participant, and then you should be able to see just like this screen where it has participants, and you can raise your hand, and then that's where you can just like, hey, I'll unmute you. So Rebecca, raise your hand. Here we go, Rebecca, let it go. Yes, ma'am. I didn't actually need something. I was just showing that I could raise my hand. Ah, you're the best. <laughs> Either way, here you go, my friends. You can raise your hand. Um, <laughs> All right. Um, 
anyways, friends, uh, have a fantastic day. We're, we're starting another one at seven. I have no idea who's going to show up at seven <laughs> tonight. But uh, again, yeah, if you didn't see the hand raised, you have to click on that participant button. That'll stretch your window out. And if you do, then you should see what, what you see on my screen is my student. So that's what my student was doing. Uh, see it through in the teacher source. And if you did register for this class, we'll make sure you get your PDUs. Uh, thanks for the credit hours. Uh, with that being said, I'm going to hit stop recording and I'm going to hit stop share and tell you all that I think you're wonderful and I really appreciate all of you and uh, we are here for you. If you need anything this week, uh, all of us will do our best.